Hi. Um, a recent film that I caught up with that had been quite highly acclaimed when it was first released was The Assistant. It's a very low-key drama on a very contemporary, very um, momentary issue of the moment. And um, that is the fallout of the Weinstein scandal. It's written and directed by Kitty Green and stars, uh, I believe, Emmy winner, Emmy winner Julia Garner uh, as the assistant to a film producer. And the film follows her over the course of a single day, getting up well before dawn, taking a company car into work, turning on the lights, arranging all the breakfast foods, waiting for all the colleagues to come in, and eventually they do. And over the course of the day, she has various menial tasks to perform, uh, filing, getting people's lunches, scrubbing things off couches, and uh, eventually she uh, is moved by several events, such as someone turning up at reception, saying that they've been hired as an assistant, even though they have no qualifications, and the producer has just met her at some restaurant somewhere. Um, a woman turns up for, to collect an earring that was left behind in the producer's office. And eventually she goes to see the company HR representative, played by Matthew McFadgen. And she voices her concerns, but he openly and bluntly gaslights her into believe, or, or suggesting to her rather, that she is imagining it that her behavior could be extremely damaging to her career because she would be seen as untrustworthy and effectively dismisses all her concerns out of hand, even though at the end of their meeting, he tacitly acknowledges these concerns are real. You just can't, you can't talk about it. Um, it's a very finely calibrated, very careful film. It's very, it's deliberately very banal. It's about almost the banality of evil, that this producer figure, whom we never see, whose voice we hear muffled in phone conversations so that we can hear, we can hear the words, but we don't necessarily process the, the sound of the voice. Um, that this, this figure is, is a controlling figure. And all through the day, we see, I don't like to use the term microaggressions because I think that's been co-opted by people who pretend that they don't happen, but little instances of ways that um, those in control, those with power, oppress those who are beneath them. And in this case, it's women. It's the other assistants in the office treating her as an afterthought. It's any concerns that she has about... Uh, the way that women are being treated in her office are stamped on. It's, it's the way that a lot of other people in the office, even when they're not feeding into the, um, uh, the exploitation perpetrated by the producer, the way that they treat her as an afterthought and as, um, as a vestigial person, um, all about abuses of power. And it's all presented very plainly, very unfussily. I found it a very uncomfortable film to watch. The way it's presenting an office environment so bluntly, but so filled with abuse, effectively. Abuse and exploitation. And ending without resolution. Um, it's... Uh, it's, it's no surprise to say that nothing changes massively by the end of the story. Although it's noticeable that when the assistant goes home at the end of the day, she has to walk and take a car as the one that took her to the office in the first place. Uh, I thought Julia Garner was excellent as her, uh, in a, a very small, contained performance, someone who has been browbeaten sufficiently that she's no longer comfortable speaking aloud or voicing her own concerns. Um, Matthew McFadgen has only one scene as the um, as the HR rep, but he conveys a great deal with that. There's a lot going on under the surface. They're kind of almost like a double thing. 
that he's saying it doesn't exist while simultaneously expressing that it does. Um, I thought it was a, a very um, of its time film and very brilliantly made. And um, I think I would recommend it very highly. <laughs>